analogies with well-known symmetry breaking effects such as the rainbow and prism, electric fields, and ripples on the surface of water have been used to characterize the Higgs field and boson. Other analogies based on the resistance of macro objects moving through media, such as people moving through crowds, or certain objects moving through thick syrup, are commonly used but they are deceptive, as the Higgs field does not actually resist particles, and mass is not caused by resistance. In the standard model of particle physics, the Higgs boson, also known as the Higgs particle, is an elementary particle generated by the quantum excitation of the Higgs field, one of the fields theorized in particle physics. According to the standard model, the Higgs boson is a massive scalar boson with zero spin and an even or positive parity, no electric charge, and no color charge that couples to mass. Welcome back to my channel. Mass Giving Mechanism in the Higgs Boson The Higgs boson is extremely unstable, decaying into other particles almost instantly after its creation. The Higgs field is a scalar field composed of two neutral and two electrically charged components, that form a complex doublet of the weak isospin SU2 symmetry. Its Mexican hat-shaped potential, causes it to have a non-zero value everywhere, including empty space, which violates the weak isospin symmetry of the electroweak interaction, and via the Higgs mechanism gives mass to a large number of particles. Both the field and the boson are named after the physicist Peter Higgs, who in 1964 proposed the Higgs mechanism, a means for some particles to acquire mass, along with five other scientists in three teams. All fundamental particles known at the time should have been massless at very high energies, but it was exceedingly difficult to explain how some particles acquire mass at lower energies. If these theories were accurate, a subatomic particle known as a scalar boson would also exist. This particle, known as the Higgs boson, could be used to determine if the Higgs field is the correct explanation. A subatomic particle with the expected properties was detected in 2012 by the ATLAS and CMS experiments at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN near Geneva in Switzerland, following a 40-year search. Subsequently, it was confirmed that the novel particle matches the expected properties of a Higgs boson. Peter Higgs and Francois Englert, members of two of the three teams, were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2013 for their theoretical predictions. Although Higgs's name has become synonymous with this theory, various parts of it were independently developed by multiple researchers between 1960 and 1972. Mass has always been difficult to comprehend, much like gravity. Some claim it's simple because we experience mass and gravity in everyday life, but a quantum description of it is extremely difficult to produce. If you were drifting in space far from Earth, you would have essentially no weight, but you will still have the same mass as if you were standing on Earth's surface. If for a quantum theory of gravity we need to wait until somebody comes with one, I would argue that we are already on the right track and we will never find the graviton as a particle, because the gravity is an emergent property. The black holes holds the key to gravity, what happens behind the horizon is the key to understand it. Two entangled black holes, quantum computers and the thermofield double state shows a deep connection between gravity and geometry. We don't have a quantum theory of gravity but we were successfully explained what mass is, from a quantum point of view, answering the question like where does matter originate. Individually massive elements in your body, like atoms, contribute to your body's mass. But where does the mass of an atom originate from? This is intriguing because atomic mass is actually just energy. In actuality, all mass is energy, as demonstrated by Einstein's famous mass-energy equivalence equation, E equals mc squared. Mass and energy are interchangeable. And the conversion factor is c squared or the speed of light squared. So where does the atomic energy come from? 99% of the mass of an atom is confined within the nucleus binding energy. 
This energy is the result of one of the four fundamental forces of nature known, and one of them, the strong force holds protons and neutrons in the nucleus of atoms together. Only approximately 1% of your mass is contained in the actual mass of the subatomic particles that make up atoms. The mass is represented by the electrons which form a cloud around the nucleus, and quarks that compose the protons and neutrons. How do these subatomic particles acquire their intrinsic mass? What is the mechanism that imparts this energy to these fundamental particles if mass is energy? This is where the Higgs field enters the equation. This field is present everywhere in space-time, including the in the vacuum. In this context, mass is merely one of the quantum properties that certain particles possess. However, most explanations of how this field imparts mass cannot avoid becoming technical when discussing the breaching of symmetry and other mathematical concepts. Let us comprehend how the Higgs field operates. I will attempt an intuitive explanation of how the Higgs field confers mass. The standard model of particle physics is the theory that characterizes all of the universe's fundamental particles as quantum field excitations. As an illustration, an excitation of the electromagnetic field would be a photon, an excitation of the electron field would be an electron, and so on. These excitations are represented as waves. But when they are well localized, as in a measurement, they appear to us as particles. These fields extend throughout all of space and time in all directions. All of these fields in their ground state, which is their lowest energy condition, are identical. Due to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, even when no excitation or particles are present, there is always some vibration. Particles are continuously being created and destroyed. These are the virtual particles that exist for such brief periods of time that they cannot be measured. When they are created, they draw energy from the vacuum and immediately return it when they are annihilated. If we will ever be able to tap this vacuum energy, this is the so-called zero point energy. It's basically like having free meals. Only when enough energy is transferred to these fields from another field to cause an excitation, real particles are created. The actual particles are these excitations. Since these are quantized fields, any excitation only occurs in predetermined amounts. For example, an excitation of the electron field must occur in multiples of 0.511 mega electron volts, which is the mass of one electron. Due to its interaction with the Higgs field, the electron's intrinsic mass of 0.511 mega electron volts is the only reason it has this value. Without this interaction, an electron would be massless, it would have energy but only in the form of momentum like photons, and it would move at the speed of light, like a charged photon. We can observe by now that the particles with mass cannot move at the speed of light, only particles that are not interacting with the Higgs field like photons, are able to move at the speed of light. The Higgs field is unique because unlike every other field, the Higgs field in unoccupied space has a net positive value, or is not zero in empty space. This is what is known as vacuum energy. For the Higgs the expected value is 246 giga electron volts. This is the exact value we would anticipate the Higgs field to have in its vacuum state, its lowest energy state. Quantum fields can interact with one another, so anything that interacts with the Higgs field also interacts with this new vacuum expectation value. This interaction produces energy. And because energy and mass are equivalent, the form of this interaction energy is identical to the form of energy associated with a mass at rest. Individual electrons continually interact with the Higgs field, because they are coupled to a field with a positive value everywhere in the universe. This constant interaction slows the electron, preventing it to ever reach the speed of light. Consequently, when a fundamental particle interacts with the Higgs field, it acquires an additional energy, it acquires a new quantum property that we call it mass. In a vacuum, 
Electrons behave like particles with a well-defined rest mass of 0.511 mega electron volts. The strength of the coupling or interaction between the electron and the Higgs vacuum expectation value, determines this rest mass. It is as if the mass of the Higgs field is shared by all fields with which it interacts. The amount of mass, excitation, or particle in a field is determined by its coupling constant. To some degree, the fields of all substantial particles are coupled to the Higgs field. Without the Higgs field, none of the other particles would possess an intrinsic mass. The greater this coupling, the more mass its particles will have. The standard model particles with mass such as electrons, quarks, and W and Z bosons, are coupled to the Higgs field in some manner. While the fields of massless particles such as photons and gluons are not coupled, why are the fields of certain particles coupled? Why does the Higgs field interact with certain particles? Since the photon is one of the particles that does not interact with the Higgs field, it retains its masslessness and travels at the speed of light. The process by which the Higgs field imparts mass to other particles is known as symmetry breaking. However, there is the neutrino case, the standard model predicts that they should be massless, but measurements seem to indicate that they have a minuscule amount of mass. We do not know the origin of this mass, it is possible that it interacts with the Higgs, but no one is certain. The Higgs field accounts for less than 1% of the mass of all visible matter in the universe. The vast majority of this mass is due to the energy of the strong force, which maintains the nuclei of atoms tightly bound. What is truly mind-boggling is the fact that this minuscule 1% mass contribution is responsible for the entirety of the visible universe. Analogies with well-known symmetry-breaking effects such as the rainbow and prism, electric fields, and ripples on the surface of water have been used to characterize the Higgs field and its boson. Other analogies based on the resistance of macro objects moving through media, such as people moving through crowds or certain objects moving through syrup are commonly used but deceptive, as the Higgs field does not actually resist particles, and mass is not caused by resistance. Higgs boson is the only particle to retain its mass at extremely high energies. It interacts with mass and has zero spin, and an even or positive parity, no electric charge, and no color charge. Additionally, it is highly unstable, decaying into other particles almost instantly via a variety of possible pathways. Numerous factors make the discovery of the Higgs field and its properties extremely significant. The Higgs boson is largely significant due to the fact that it can be examined using existing knowledge and experimental technology, in order to confirm and investigate the Higgs field theory as a whole. On the other hand, Proof that the Higgs field and boson did not exist would have been equally significant. When the Higgs boson was discovered in 2012 at CERN, this proof of the existence of a scalar field was significant. It suggests that other hypothetical scalar fields proposed by other theories, such as the inflaton field, open the possibility that it may exist, proving the inflation theory in this manner. Thank you for watching.